So we just determined that the uh, incident power, the power of the incident wave on our transmission line when connecting a source and load, that incident power is sort of the emperor of all power. It is larger than the uh, power delivered from the source on one side. It's larger than the power absorbed. Therefore, on the uh, load on the other, uh, the incident power is larger than the reflected power. And certainly the incident power is larger than the net power. Now I say larger. What I really mean here mathematically, of course, it's greater than or equal to. <clears throat> in other words, it cannot be less than any of those other ones, but it could be equal to those. And so the question becomes, when is this greater than or equal to an equality? Under what conditions is the incident power equal to delivered power and thus the absorbed power? We look at our relationship between the power delivered from the source and the incident and reflected power along our transmission line. And remember, the difference between incident and reflected is the net power flow along the transmission line. By conservation of energy, that net power flow must be equal uh, to the delivered power, uh, the power uh, net power flow at the beginning of the transmission line, and also, of course, the power that is absorbed, the net power flow at the end of the transmission line. Specifically, specifically we're going to ask the question, under what conditions is this delivered power equal to the incident power? And we find that the looking at this equation, it's pretty simple. The incident power is delivered is going to be is going to be equal to the delivered power under the condition that the reflected power is equal to zero. So this is the situation. And again, make sure that you look at this and think about it. Once more, I find students frequently decide that the incident power is always equal to the power delivered from the source. The incident's flowing from the source, and therefore the incident power must be uh, the power that's delivered by the source. But as this equation uh, states, and I have stated multiple times, that is not the case. Unless, of course, we have a situation now where the reflected power is equal to zero. For one, that special case, and only that special case, we find that the incident power along our transmission line, the uh, uh, power associated with the wave propagating toward the load from the source, that incident power is equal to the delivered power for this one special case. So the special case where the reflected power is equal to zero gives us a situation where the incident power and the delivered power are equal to each other. Um, <clears throat> The question then is what circumstance will the reflected power be equal to zero? And we can look at this relationship uh, between reflected power and incident power. Notice that the uh, ratio of reflected to incident power is this value of the magnitude squared of the load reflection coefficient. Therefore, the reflected power depends on the load that's connected at the uh, end of the transmission line, and it will determine whether the reflected power is equal to zero. Under the condition that the uh, load reflection coefficient is equal to zero, in other words, the load reflection coefficient itself is equal to zero, um, <clears throat> we find that the reflected power will be equal to zero. So the uh, delivered power will be equal to the incident power when the reflected power is equal to zero. We could alternatively say that that's when the load reflection coefficient of the termination of our transmission line is equal to zero. <clears throat> Excuse me, the question then becomes, what is the impedance of this load, this impedance uh, that would uh, result in a load reflection coefficient that is equal to zero? And we've uh, discussed this before. If we look at the definition of the load reflection coefficient, this value, gamma L, will be equal to zero under the condition that ZL, the load impedance, is numerically equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. In that case, the numer uh, numerator is equal to zero and gamma L is equal to zero. Again, this is a situation where the load uh, impedance is numerically equal to Z0. So we can state if the load impedance is numerically equal to Z0, then we have no reflected power. And then and only then will the incident power be equal to the delivered power from the source. So, of course, the condition where the load impedance terminating a transmission line is numerically equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line that it terminates, that is a special case that we call the quote-unquote matched load. 
I might not have mentioned it before, but uh, the fact that we call this a match load has nothing to do with a conjugate match. It only means that the load impedance is numerically equal to the characteristic impedance Z0. Under that case, we showed or found that the input impedance of our terminated uh, uh, line, um, terminated uh, transmission line, is going to be equal likewise to the characteristic impedance Z0. And all this was true regardless of the length of the transmission line. So now that we understand there's no reflected wave, we can kind of see why this is true. We actually have gone through uh, this analysis uh, before on a previous presentation, but uh, we'll go through it once more to make sure that uh, that you understand it. Now that we have the uh, viewpoint of uh, no reflected power, no reflected wave, we can see uh, uh, perhaps see the importance of this uh, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, so if we have a match load, uh, the load impedance is numerically equal to Z0, the load reflection coefficient is equal to Z0. And from that, we can determine that the uh, wave complex wave amplitude uh, V0 minus is equal to zero. Because of that, the minus voltage at every point on the transmission line is equal to zero. And the reason the minus voltage at every point on the transmission line is zero is because there is no minus going wave, electromagnetic wave. That wave is the reflected wave. There's no power in that uh, wave. And so it cannot create any current or any voltage as shown here for the minus wave voltage, the reflected voltage. <clears throat> so what we have is only a plus going wave, an incident wave. And that wave then uh, will create a uh, voltage and a current at every location on the transmission line. And since there is no minus voltage or minus current, the total voltage is simply the plus voltage and the total current is simply the plus current again, since there's no minus voltage or minus current. So if we define the line impedance function, and it's always defined in this way, this first equality is always true. The line impedance function is the ratio of the total voltage function to the total current function. We find that the total voltage and total current for this particular case, when we have a match load, uh, is equal to the plus voltage divided by the uh, plus current. And what we find, which is always true, is that the ratio of V plus to I plus is equal to Z zero. So again, this first equality is always true. The second equality is always true. This, I'm sorry, third equality, I should say here, is always true. This equality equal sign in the middle is true only under the condition that um, we have a matched load, that the line impedance function is equal to the characteristic impedance at every point in uh, location Z along our transmission line if we have this matched load. So with respect to a um, complete circuit, we have a source and load connected to a transmission line. We can go through and <clears throat> say some things about um, uh, the activity of, the, of energy along that transmission line when we have a specifically a matched load. So if ZL is equal to zero, Z zero, we found that the minus wave voltage is equal to zero, which means, of course, the reflected power is equal to zero. Again, if we have a matched load, uh, meaning that in that case, the incident power will be equal to the power delivered by the source. And of course, the delivered power by the source is always equal to the power absorbed by the load. So we can conclude that the incident power is likewise equal to the absorbed power. Again, this last equality is always true if we have a lossless device, like a lossless transmission line, a lossless two-port network, rather, between the source and load. <clears throat> but for the specific case where the load impedance is numerically equal to Z0, we find that this equality now is true. Remember, in general, this is a greater than or equal to. It becomes an equal sign only under the condition that we have a matched load. Let's go back and consider then a matched source, the situation where a source has a source impedance, ZG, that is numerically equal to Z0, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line to which it is attached. And uh, the question we might ask is, do things simplify uh, if we have a matched source? They simplify greatly when we had a matched load, no reflected power, and therefore the incident power is equal to the power delivered uh, by the source. Let's see what happens when we have a match source. So we're just looking at a match source only for this. The load is some arbitrary, arbitrary value. You're back to some arbitrary load here. 
if we have though a match source connected to the beginning of our transmission line then we know that the plus wave voltage simplifies to this result here and the importance of this result is it is independent of the load impedance remember generally speaking we find that the both the incident power and the reflected power must depend on both the source impedance and the load impedance um, we cannot make a causal causal statement that the um, incident wave is due to the source and the reflected wave is due to the load no the incident wave is due to the source and the load and the reflected wave likewise is due to both of them we have to simultaneously satisfy boundary conditions on either end of our transmission line <clears throat> and those boundary conditions depend simultaneously on both the source and the load but for this case where we had a match source we find that the plus going voltage and therefore the incident wave is independent of the load impedance and that means that we can really establish causality for the case of a match source we can say that the incident wave the plus going wave is dependent on the source and the source only if it is a match source So that, of course, begs the question, if we have a match source, what is the power of the incident wave? The incident wave, we say, is dependent on the match source only. Uh, what would that incident power be? Well, we know the power of the incident wave, the power associated with the uh, plus wave, uh, has this form. And we now know the form of the plus wave voltage for a... Um, for a uh, um, when we have a, a a special situation of a match source and we insert that into this result and take the magnitude squared again i'm taking the magnitude squared of the product of two complex numbers and that's simply the uh, product of the magnitude squared of each the magnitude of course of a complex exponential is equal to one and so this simply becomes then the magnitude squared of eg divided by four multiply this first term and we get this result here and I say, wow, when we see this, <clears throat> this is something that should jump right out you and say, you know, I've seen this before. I know what this is. Look at this result. What is that result? Remember, if we have a matched source, then the source impedance is numerically equal to Z0. In other words, it's a complex number whose real part is Z0 and imaginary part is equal to 0. The real part then of the source impedance, RG, must be equal to Z0. Again, the source impedance is a resistor whose value is numerically equal to Z0. And so we can rewrite the incident power in this way. Since Z0 is equal to RG, we can rewrite it in this form and again i say wow look at this hope maybe this is a little clearer what is this value what can we say about this value with, with respect to the source um, the matched uh, source so hopefully you recognize this result as the available power of the source and so we have a really important and interesting result. If we have a match source, in other words, we have a source whose source impedance is numerically equal to Z0, the characteristic impedance uh, of the transmission line to which it is attached, we find that the incident power is dependent only on the match source itself. More specifically, that incident power is equal to the available power of that match source. If I have a match source, I know instantly what the uh, um, incident power on our transmission line is. It's equal to the available power of that match source. Again, it's independent of what's attached to the other end. This is the one case where we establish causality between our source and our incident wave. We know the answer without having to know anything about the load impedance that is terminating the line. So in summary, for a match source then, um, if we have a match source, the incident power is equal to the available power of that match source. Again, if we have this special case. And so we see an interesting symmetry here. If we have a match load, we immediately know that the incident power is equal to the power delivered by the source. If we have a match source, we know the incident power is equal to the power available from the source. Now, 
Don't mix those two things up. If we have a match source, the incident power is equal to the available power of that source, but it probably is not equal to the power delivered by the source. If we have a match load, the incident power is equal to the power delivered from that source, but it's probably not equal to the power available from that source. All right, don't try to put the two things together. If we want a situation where the incident power is equal to both the available power of the source and the delivered power of the source, we need our source to be quote unquote matched and our load likewise to be quote unquote matched. Another way of looking at it is this. If we have a matched source, we know exactly the value of the incident power. It is equal to the available power of that matched source. If we have a match load, then we know exactly the value of the reflected power. It's equal to zero. So make sure that you understand the ramifications of having a match source and a match load with respect to power. We already understand those ramifications with respect to impedance. If we terminate a transmission line at a match load, the input impedance will be numerically equal to Z0, regardless of the length of the transmission line. If we attach a length of transmission line to a source, the transformed source will have the same source impedance, Z0, again, regardless of the length of the transmission line. But in this presentation, we've tried to show the uh, relationships that occur from match source and low with respect to power. Again, if we have a match source, then the incident power is equal to the available power. If we have a match load, the reflected power is equal to zero, and the incident power is equal to the delivered power from the source.